Today I want to tell you why some scientists believe that our universe is really a three-dimensional projection of a two-dimensional space. They call it the holographic principle and the key idea is this. Usually the number of different things you can imagine happening inside a part of space increases with the volume. Think of a bag of particles. The larger the bag, the more particles and the more details you need to describe what the particles do. These details that you need to describe what happens are what physicists call the degrees of freedom. And the number of these degrees of freedom is proportional to the number of particles, which is proportional to the volume. At least that's how it normally works. The holographic principle now says that you can describe what happens inside the bag by encoding it on the surface of that bag at the same resolution. This may not sound all that remarkable, but it is, and here's why. Take a cube that is made of smaller cubes, each of which is either black or white. You can think of each small cube as a single bit of information. How much information is in the large cube? Well, that's the number of the smaller cubes, so three cube in this example. Or if you divide every side of the large cube into n pieces instead of three, that's n cube. But if you instead count the surface elements of the cube at the same resolution, you have only six times n square. This means that for large n, there are many more volume bits than surface bits at the same resolution. The holographic principle now says that even though there are so much fewer surface bits, the surface bits are sufficient to describe everything that happens in the volume. This does not mean that the surface bits correspond to certain regions of volume. It's somewhat more complicated. It means instead that the surface bits describe certain correlations between the pieces of volume. So if you think again of the particles in the bag, these will not move entirely independently. And that's what is called the holographic principle. That really you can encode the events inside any volume on the surface of that volume at the same resolution. But you may say, how come we never notice that particles in a bag are somehow constrained in their freedom? Good question. The reason is that the stuff that we deal with in everyday life, say that bag of particles, doesn't remotely make use of the theoretically available degrees of freedom. Our present observations only test situations well below the limit that the holographic principle says should exist. The limit from the holographic principle really only matters if the degrees of freedom are strongly compressed, as is the case, for example, for stuff that collapses to a black hole. Indeed, the physics of black holes is one of the most important clues that physicists have for the holographic principle. That's because we know that black holes have an entropy that is proportional to the area of the black hole horizon, not to its volume. That's the important part. Black hole entropy is proportional to the area, not to the volume of the black hole. Now, in thermodynamics, entropy counts the number of different microscopic configurations that have the same macroscopic appearance. So the entropy basically counts how much information you could stuff into a macroscopic thing if you kept track of the microscopic details. Therefore, the area scaling of the black hole entropy tells you that the information content of black holes is bounded by a quantity which is proportional to the horizon area. This relation is the origin of the holographic principle. The other important clue for the holographic principle comes from string theory. That's because string theorists like to apply their mathematical methods in a space-time with a negative cosmological constant, which is called an anti desitter space. Most of them believe, though it has strictly speaking never been proved, that gravity in such a space can be described by a different theory that is entirely located on the boundary of that anti desitter space, so that is a space with one dimension less. And while this idea came from string theory, one does not actually need the strings for this relation between the volume and the surface to work. More concretely, the holographic correspondence uses the limit in which the effects of the strings no longer appear. 
so the holographic principle seems to be more general than string theory. I have to add though that we do not live in an anti desitter space because for all we currently know the cosmological constant in our universe is positive. Therefore it's unclear how much the volume surface relation in anti desitter space tells us about the real world. And for what the black hole entropy is concerned the mathematics we currently have does not actually tell us that the entropy counts the information that one can stuff into a black hole. It may instead only count the information that one loses by disconnecting the inside and outside of the black hole. This is called the entanglement entropy and it scales with the surface for many systems other than black holes. So there is nothing particularly holographic about it. Whether or not you buy the motivations for the holographic principle, you may want to know whether we can test it. The answer is definitely maybe. Earlier this year, Eric Verlinde and Catherine Zurich proposed that we try to test the holographic principle using gravitational wave interferometers. The idea is that if the universe is holographic, then the fluctuations in the two orthogonal directions that the interferometer arms extend into would be more strongly correlated than one normally expects. However, not everyone agrees that the particular realization of holography which Valinda and Zurich use is the correct one. Personally, I think that the motivations for the holographic principle are not particularly strong and in any case, we will not be able to test this hypothesis in the coming centuries. Therefore, writing papers about it is a waste of time. But it is an interesting idea and at least you now know what physicists are talking about when they say the universe is a hologram.